Hello everybody, welcome to another episode, episode number four of Web Boxing 101 Podcast. I am your host, Luis Trevino, also known as Tree, coming to you by way of Warrior's Edge Boxing Gym Promotions here in El Paso, Texas. As we bring you this podcast, episode four, we would like to thank everybody for joining us today, this evening, and wishing everybody a happy Valentine's Day as well. Well, we have a kind of a special show here for you guys tonight. Being that it's Valentine's, but we also want to mention that we don't have no guests today. We're getting ready for the big show next week as well, having guests. But today we won't have guests, but we have some hot topics that I'm going to talk about. So feel free, guys, to comment. Feel free even on the recorded uh, podcast that we've had. You can comment. It'll stay there. You can live comment as well. And you can call in at 915-216-3789 as we launch podcast, as we launch episode number four of Wet Boxing. 101 podcast like i said we are excited to be here and just to let you know i'll give you an introduction of what warriors that stands for we established in 2009 uh and it was in the in my home at our in, in, inside the garage with two bags and we used to claim uh, we used to train all, all the kids around the neighborhood um and that's how warriors edge boxing uh got started i mean for myself i got started a while back i started at lawler's boxing club Central El Paso. Uh, Chito was the trainer, great trainer. I trained a couple of times, never made it up to the ring, uh, but I continued training and I made myself way back to the Carolina Rec Center uh, where I continued to train and then I found the love. I, I did one time, I did an announcing job for, for a local boxing tournament and I fell in love with announcing. But my history in training, guys, and in the contact sport goes way, way back. Uh, I've been employed and I'm a veteran of the El Paso County Sheriff's Office for 22 years. Very proud of that. And for the, re- for the most part of my career, I've been in the training business. And I've trained the men and women of corrections, the men and women of, of patrol deputies uh, to fight. And I've fought a lot and I've traveled all over the, uh, the United States. And also I've had the honor to travel to South America, Sao Paulo, Brazil. A big shout out to my friends out there. Um, as I train people out in South America, which I'm very proud of, training people and officers uh, that have that have positions and have worked big events like uh, the World Cup, the Olympics, uh, and I've been out there. I go out there like twice a year out there to train. But nevertheless, I've been always involved in training. Uh, and I'm no stranger to contact sports. And then, like I said, we opened the gym in 20, 2009, the, the, the name to, uh, Warriors Edge Boxing. We started our, uh, our, our journey, and it's led us all the way to here, uh, to this beautiful facility that we have, and we're running for kids. But, uh, you know, there's been ups and downs, and we've learned a lot, and I want to thank my coaches that I have right now and my staff. A big shout-out to uh, Tokayo, Sergio Colazzo, my son, my right-hand man that helps me a lot here at the gym as well, that uh, with them and their support, uh, this gym has, has done a lot. I also want to shout out to my good friend, Sandy Hernandez. She's been a big part of this gym as well. And my brother-in-law, Sergio Perez, big part of the gym here as we've uh, catapulted uh, the tournaments here, but also the Clash of the Titans. And again, look, man, we're... We're, uh, we're doing good stuff in this business. And let me tell you, we've learned a lot from people around the boxing world. So that's what the gym stands for. And, and of course, the, gym, the the doors are open. And like I said before in my first ep- a podcast that, you know, look, man, it's not all about my gym. It's about uh, other gyms as well. And that's why we, we created this podcast because we wanted to to help other gyms and before i go before i keep going i do want to apologize i also want to give a shout out to jojo galarza uh the son of the great rocky galarza he's also one of my coaches here uh and you know what these are my active coaches and we've left coaches behind too that have came through these doors uh that have done great stuff for warriors edge boxing as well uh and for the community as well so we've we've established a lot of friendships and we want to continue to establish friendships because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it's about the kids, and it's, it's all about the kids. So uh, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on what, what, um, what uh, we stand for. Uh, we want to give a shout-out to my sponsors for Episode 4. We want to give a big shout-out to my sponsor, Ambery Health Southwest, over there on the west side, 110 Montecito Suite A1. Uh, they, good, they do great work uh, with, um, with medicine. 
And that's going to be one of my guest speakers next week, people from Ambury Health Southwest. Uh, I don't want to reveal what it's all about, but tune in. Uh, you won't be disappointed. So a big sponsor for tonight will be Ambury Health Southwest. And then also uh, we want to give a shout-out to another sponsor of ours. It's going to be Pueblo Boxing all the way from Wichita Falls, Texas. Julian over there does great work. Visit his website uh, at Pueblo Boxing Gym in Wichita Falls, Texas. They do some great work, and we see them in the tournaments as well. So a big shout-out to everybody out there. Big shout-out to people from Arizona. My brother listening in live. Uh, drinking a cold one, I think he is what he says. But we want to give a big shout out to him as well. So um, let's give away two tickets for the Golden Gloves. And we're giving away tickets. And the Golden Gloves is February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the El Paso County Coliseum. The Judging Arena. The tradition continues, folks. The El Paso Golden Gloves, as we strive as a boxing community to get it where it needs to be. Uh, and again, we have some great people that that do great work great volunteer work we've had them on our past shows so yeah man golden gloves is coming up it's we're a couple of days away from it so we want to give some tickets away uh and and from here on now we're going to be giving away tickets for golden gloves so i really want you guys to tune in and the caller call in for your tickets we're going to give a pair right now we're giving a, a pair of tickets if you can tell me what year was golden gloves established here in el paso pair of tickets what year was Golden Gloves established here in El Paso? You can call 216-3789. Be the third caller. 216-3789. Be the third caller if you can tell us what year was Golden Gloves established here in El Paso. And people at my gym also, you have the right. And you can also for we're gonna get you can also uh, uh, participate. So we're gonna give away two tickets right now. If you can tell me what year was Golden Gloves established. As we get ready for Golden Glove, it's Golden Glove month here in El Paso. Something to be very excited about. So, And we're going to continue. we got some more questions for you guys and, and trivia uh, to give away a pair of tickets to this year's Boxing Fight Night, the 77th anniversary Golden Gloves, if you can tell me. So, folks, the number again is 915-216-3789. Let me know what year was Golden Gloves established here in El Paso. I gave you a clue already. Well, uh, two big topics we're going to talk about tonight, guys, as, uh, as, as, we, as we move on right along. And we're going to talk about boxing, guys, about what is going on with boxing, what has happened to the sport. I guess, I guess what is wrong with boxing uh, overall? Is it a dying breed? Has it been dying? You know, boxing has been one of the oldest sports, um, period, uh, right alongside baseball. Uh, and it's been here, and it was probably the only sport, we're talking in the last two decades, it's been the only sport, it was the mothership of sports, boxing, I remember on TV, baseball is also hot, but what started happening, in my, and again, these are all my opinions, guys, what started happening is that there's so many sports now, and as sports started generating, there's sports for everything, there's sports, the X games, the Y games, the Z games, hey, if you can jump off the roof, they'll make it a sport. So boxing started taking a back seat in all these other sports. And that's, I think, why boxing started putting in the back burner and other sports started creating. Now, one of the things that been the big dilemma or, or controversy or talks around for the last five years is as boxing versus MMA, boxing versus wrestling. You know, there's so many leagues in, 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 in wrestling that they have overwhelmed and consume the sport of the contact sport. And don't get me wrong, uh, I am a MMA fan. You know, I like MMA. I really think it's a sport. It's an awesome sport. MMA, jiu-jitsu gives you, or the mixed martial arts, I'm sorry, it gives you a flavor of every technique. And it's a science. Stand-up, the ground game, the submissions, the wrestling. So it gives you a lot of that stuff, and it's a combined sport. Uh, like boxing as well, but it gives you the sense of a lot of stuff going on. So boxing versus MMA, um, I think we're losing the battle here, guys, as far as fanship. And I'll give you just some numbers here. In, 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 in talking to people that have their kids in MMA and jiu-jitsu in, in the amateur world, okay, um, these places get packed. Th these, these venues get packed. For example, the North American... The North American Grappling Association, the MMA Jiu-Jitsu Tournament, um, it's 
it's it fills it. We're talking about a thousand plus kids in these places. Um, and here's another thing: they charge every kid, I think, an estimate of ninety dollars per the tournament. Ninety dollars, folks, plus the admission. The admission is fifteen dollars to twenty-five dollars to get in these places. Um, you're talking about the wrestling high school tournaments. They charge ten dollars to get in, and that's huge as well. What about the Rocky Mountain Nationals? Sixty dollars. That place had over a thousand kids. Uh, what about the local? We had a local one here, the Desert Jiu Jitsu Championship. Over a thousand kids, guys. Uh, it, it's 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 just awesome. I mean, a lot of people support contact sports um, in our tournaments, and yes, it's it's and that's why again, and, and I don't want to put anybody down, but in our tournaments, guys, uh, we're lucky we get fifty people. I'm not exaggerating, fifty people, you know, and and it's a ten dollar entry fee. And, and I, I know in the past we've talked, what is it? What, what, what's happening, man? I mean, is it, is it the promoting? Is it, um, uh, who knows? I mean, but that's, 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 the, that's what I've researched. Um, and I think, you know, and, and I kind of scratch my head. I think maybe because we're so subjected to one entity, USA Boxing in Colorado, and it comes down hard on us here in El Paso. Let's say El Paso, and I'm probably talking about other other cities as well. That that's the mothership. That that's all we can go through. That's the only the only entity we have to go by. There's not leagues. Like for example, I talked to you about associations. There's numerous associations. I'll give you an example, like the football leagues, flag football, the West Texas flag football league, the East Texas, uh, and there's numerous tournaments going around El Paso. Uh, at the same time, there's different associations. Not in boxing, folks. We have one entity, and that's it. So we have one tournament once a month, once every two weeks, uh, if we're lucky. And that, and it, and it ties the local boxing commission's hands, I believe, because we can't do other tournaments. We can't do simultaneous tournaments here today. Uh, and Saturday, we're going to have three leagues, or we don't have leagues, in other words. We don't have several of boxing associations. I think it'll be awesome the day we see several boxing associations and you might tell me you might tell me that you you, you know you're you you it's never gonna work what, what are you talking about well you never know folks i mean they're there i just feel that we need more boxing associations i think i think um the more associations the more for everybody we're not just subjected to one mothership i know there's rules and regulations and it will probably never happen because that's just the way it is, and it's always been like that. But you know what, guys? I mean, I think it's time for changing. And, and, and you know, your ideas are welcome. Uh, New Blood needs to come in and share their ideas. And let's see what we can do about all this, guys. Because, yeah, I mean, we need to pack our arena. And I hope Golden Gloves, we got people out there to support us and to support those kids, right? Um, so what is holding boxing back? And this is a question I've been asking my guests, and I'll ask one next week as well. What is holding boxing back? I mean, uh, in researching it, is it the low-income families? Do we have a lot of low-income families in boxing? Um, do we? Um, is it? Is it? I mean, and and you know what? It's it's that stereotype of the boxer that, and and if you see the stories of boxers, they they grow up in the rough streets, they come back, uh, they don't they have it, they, they you know it's either the 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 wrong path to life but they find boxing and they, they they look for boxing in the rec centers and then they start boxing uh but that's been the stereotype that's been always the 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 story right of the of the criminal boxer or the uh, the lonely boxer or the boxer that found boxing and he made it to success and and now he's a world champion or whatever the case may be so you know what is holding boxing back and seeing all these other tournaments and these kids uh it's awesome having that support in the wrestling world the jiu-jitsu world um and boxing continues to take the back seat and 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 i hope boxing would 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 will take the lead in this because guys it's the sweet science and and a lot of people will, will, will argue, well, no, MMA is taking over, boxing is taking over. You know what? I, I believe that boxing will never die. That's just me. I think I think uh, it'll never die at the pro ranks. And in the amateur world, yeah, we're at the back seat. But I think there's time for reform. And I think there's time to move forward and, and get boxing where it needs to be. Get that sweet science where it needs to be. Because like we mentioned before in our past, in our past podcast, uh, we have some great, great kids. Uh, great champions out there um, that do good stuff uh, for the sport of boxing and um, f 
overall for the gyms and promotions. So uh, that's what I've researched. Boxing versus MMA has boxing taking a back seat. Who knows, right? Um, that's just what what I found. Uh, another interesting thing that I've been that I found, guys, and this is straight from shootafairone.com. Uh, we found an article, and in speaking with them, um, we talked about USA Boxing and the a- AIBA uh, of what needs to of the problems that that's been plaguing uh, the amateur world of boxing. I mean, you, you think we have problems here at these levels? Um, Jesus, what about the USA Boxing program? Holy smokes, man! Uh, major problems in the AIBA boxing world as well. Uh, <clears throat> and I just want to tell you that. Uh, what I'm about to discuss is not the reflection of beliefs of the Warriors Edge Gym Boxing Promotion, its members, its coaches, or the owners. It's just what we found. And this is what we're here to do. We're here to dig up stuff. Uh, we're here to talk about boxing, bring it up to light. And whatever we research, we're going to bring it up. And you f- feel free to comment. I mean, um, shoot fair, shootfair1.com made a letter, open letter to USA Boxing uh, in 2016. Um, and and it and it and they discuss the three problems that are boxers and and hell their families as well uh known too well within the usa boxing right um and let me let me tell you one thing our amateur boxing system is filled with honest hard-working volunteers and professionals guys who give what they can to the amateur careers of our kids of course right and to the of course to the advancement of our sport and if i seen advancement of our sport guys now that i told you my little bit history of my gym and how much we've learned we've learned a lot from people like mr junior vicencio people like hector Espinosa. um we've learned a lot from these people uh we learned a lot from mr raul prieto when he used to run the association um they they were all for the advancement of the sport Right, we might not agree with everything, and I might not agree with some of the stuff or the callings of the judges. At the end of the day, they're human, but at the end of the day, we all know that all of us in this field, in this sport, is for the advancement of our sport. It's rare, guys, and I'm going to be honest with you here that I, that I've seen somebody uh, differ from that. I think everybody's here for the advancement of the sport. All right, they are, however, embarrassing issues that plague us. And, and I think that's in every sport, right? And in every, uh, every entity that you get involved with. But in you, since we're talking about boxing, guys, I think there is an embarrassing, some, a lot of embarrassing issues that plagues us. What, what makes it ever so cringly painful is that the issues seem to be capable of easy fixes. That's me. I think we can fix them easy, right? There are such easy fixes that the growing feeling of members is that USA Boxing doesn't give a speckle of an, of an iota about the problems, right people reduce the ignorance to being business as usual what did i just say before well it's always been done like that we, we should continue just doing it like that no guys we can change things and we can change it for the betterment of our kids there's so many kids out there and, I, and again as a gym owner i have a lot of kids here and i see a lot of potential here and it's not about business as usual we can change things so again yes there's some embarrassing issues uh but i think these fixes are can be quick and they can be easy but and it's okay to voice our opinion. It's 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 great. So as I was researching this, as we move along, right? Um, how is USA Boxing should be changed, right? Uh, there was three problems that came upon researching and and, and uh, discovering some stuff. And one of them was fighter no shows to schedule bouts. And I found that interesting. You know, I never thought of that. Uh, fighters not showing, right? Uh, fighters no shows. Uh, it's easily avoidable. So what happens when your trainer, when your when your when your fighter, uh, when your boxer trains, when when, you know, when the kid is training his his butts off for two months, three months, three two months, whatever the case may be, and and, and, and you know they do train hard. You know they make weight. Poor poor kids diet. They get on, on strict diets to make the weight because again there's also a common courtesy in boxing as gym owners, gym to gym. And the local boxing community, they put it together. We want to fight. We want to produce the fighter. And we want to make sure that the kid's opponent comes into weight. But there's been times, even even with us here, our kid trains so hard. And then come way in morning, the fighter doesn't show up. Well, what do you mean? What, what, what happened? Oh, well, he didn't show up. He got cold feet. Or he just didn't show up. And we know the fighter, right? This happens all too often in boxing. Uh, show... Um, Show promoters have to overschedule just to ensure having a bout card. And let me tell you, when a fighter does not show up to the weigh-in, the promoter, the LBC, 
the one that's throwing the show, man, he has to scramble. I mean, he he's running around like with chicken without a head. He wants to make sure the other kid gets a fight because he sees the, in the kid's face, uh, you know, uh, discouragement. And, and, and we, we might lose the kid because he's trained so hard. He goes, and well, you know what, that fighter didn't come. I'm going to get discouraged. Why did I train so hard? But again, it's not, it's out of our control. But I see these promoters, uh, just to ensure they have a bout card, they got to do, they got to, they got to leap bounds and, and, and go through hoops, right? To avoid this, I think there's there's something called accountability. We got to hold people accountable. Accountability is crucial. Like in any business, in any career, you hold your employees accountable. In this sport, we should hold people accountable. A boxer must submit. And I would think if the boxer would submit his passbook uh, in order to confirm a bout beforehand, if he does not show up at time for the weigh-in, or if he's not even agreed upon weight and the coaches do not agree to let the fight occur, the boxer should be suspended for 30 to 90 days and fined. Well, I don't know about the fine, but uh, hell, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, do, we have to have a bite to our bark, period. You know, like I said, we, we got to have a bite to our bark to to make sure that we don't, ha- we, we this doesn't happen often because I see it happen, guys. Uh, I know... Uh, the last podcast, the, the president talked about fighters dropping in the last minute. You know, and I understand fighters don't show up or they drop in the last minute because of injuries or whatever, whatever the case may be. It, I mean, it can be a legitimate reason, doctor, physicals, or they didn't register on time. Um, but I think the common courtesy, even giving a two weeks notice, three weeks notice, or to the, or to the promoter, whatever the case may be, to let them know, hey, man, give us enough time to 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 fill the card. Or give us enough time. I know when I do the Clash of the Titans, my matchmaker, and oh, by the way, is Daniel Vasquez, DJ does a magnificent job. Uh, he tells the fighters, look, man, if you're not going to fight or if something happens, please give us time because it's not fair to the, your opponent that's been training so hard. I'm not saying you're not training, but we've had times, guys, that on the scale, the day of the weigh-ins, the fighter doesn't show up. And again, it brings um, discouragement to the other fighter. Now, just and these are adults. Imagine the kids. Imagine an eight-year-old, ten-year-old, he's training his butts off. He's ready to go, and he doesn't get a fight. Now, also take note: this is not a team sport. This is not what I mean by team sport. This is not baseball or t-ball. You know, uh, we're not going to have a game every Saturday. You know, boxing is hard to come from. These matches are hard to come from. It just doesn't. It's not out of the genie bottle that we're gonna we're gonna nod our heads and everything's gonna appear all dandy and hunky dory. No, 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 no. There's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes, especially when a fighter doesn't show. So, it, it, just imagine a kid. He gets discouraged. The kid trains so hard, and no, you're not gonna fight this week. And it's look. Let me tell you, in my gym, it's happened more than once. It's happened more than three times. It happens. The fighter no show. So. I think if he uh, if he doesn't make the weight, doesn't agree upon the weight, um, I think the box should be suspended for 30 to 90 days. Problem number two, and this is I might touch some uh, I, I might touch some nerves here, guys, but I think it's the judges lack uh, judges lack uniformity. I think there are no detailed standards for scoring fights. Period. Judges cannot possibly know exactly what they're looking for or looking at. This this may sound like a hasty judgment, but the proof is in the disparity of scores in given bouts, and we see it a lot. Draws, therefore, are only fair outcomes. Uh, it should be it is ludicrous that draws are non-existence in amateur boxing. Uh, hypothetically, if the two fighters do identically the same things in a fight, how can a draw not be allowed? If possible, and we see it more than more. Right, the fighters uh, come to a draw. We, you probably seen fighters. I mean, duke it out, and they're pretty much on the same level. Uh, it, it was so close, but there is no draw. Uh, again, that is tough to swallow, too, on those kids, right? Uh, there's also a glaring conflict of interest that there exists made judges and referees who are affiliated to boxing clubs. There should be a glaring conflict of interest, and it exists that many judges and referees are affiliated to boxing clubs, even as coaches, right? Um, and not, I'm not just talking here, guys, everywhere, right? This is, um, this is everywhere. Right, this is some of the problems that I saw that people had wrote, um, and you know what? I'm I'm probably going to be uh, um, I, I'm um, I'm I'm also part of this, right? I'm a gym owner, and I have kids out of my gym fighting. Uh, for example, at the Clash of the Titans, guys, I am the promoter of it, and I've had my kids fight in it, and I try to stay away as much as possible. I try not to um, I try not to influence nobody. I try not to 
Uh, but it's hard. It's it's hard what they say here that not having judges or referees or affiliated to boxing clubs have you plug, uh, your fight or fight. But it's hard. I mean, boxing is real influential. It's very influential. I think in the pro ranks, uh, what what should happen is the judges should be picked. The judges should be picked, and the ref should be picked a day before the mega fight, not three months before the fight. You know that, or two months before the fight. I think they, I think they should pick the judges a day or two days before the fight. Once they pick them, they fly them into the to the to wherever the event's going to be. They fly them in and they seclude them. They sequester them in a room until fight night, and then they walk them out and ready to go fight. So again, sequestering means no TV, no radio. Yeah, it's hard and it's kind of harsh, guys. But I think it's a, it'd be a great change for boxing because boxing is very, very, very influential. Uh, very influential, and, the, and 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 I've I've discussed this before, and people have told me, well, don't you think that's harsh? It'll never happen. How can that be? Well, I mean, they play, they pay these promoters, these pro promoters, pay these judges some big amounts of money. I mean, if you want to be a judge, those are the those are the sacrifices that's got to be made. Uh, but again, that's in the pro ranks. When we have a pro fighter. We'll talk about that. Uh, that'll be next week. Uh, but let's go back to the amateurs and, and the judges. And again, again, look, man. The, the judges and referees do a lot of great work um, and, 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 they're, and they're people with integrity uh, but I think um, I think the judges and and, um, and, and the, and the uh, refs um, should be given more credit uh, and again um, be more transparent as well with the organizations um, the third problem that I found in um, the website, like I was telling you about in uh, shootfair1.com, is the disorganization uh, of the sport. Uh, the typical standards, I'm, I'm, what I mean is the typical standards of other organizations are virtually non existent in USA boxing. The disorganization, right? Um, I read that one, like for example, one boxer's mother at a show noted that um, they're all ed- uneducated and responsible, over the hill street kids, rude with brute stupidity. That's what she said. This is not what I want boxing to be about. I wouldn't want my kids involved in this either. If, if that were truly the case, I don't believe in, it is the case of USA boxing as a whole, but there are valid points. And here are the valid points, guys, that I put. And again, these are just what I've researched. Uh, why, are the certain, why are certain rules in place? Why are draws not done more beforehand in any, in any of our local tournaments? Why is there so much political he say, she say, Unseating of presidents, etc., etc. Uh, very political in the game. Um, why are promoters sons fighting on their own cards? Hey, it goes to me as well, right? And that was a question here that was brought up, right? Again, it's not coming from me, guys. I'm just bringing out the what people are saying, and I'm not justifying a lot about these questions. But that was one of the questions, right? Why are our tournaments are not in bracket structures? Uh, why email bout notices are sent to fighters only and are sometimes two or three days notices only and now coaches can't appeal protests or review scorecards? Um, if that's the case, where is the accountability? Right? I, I, um, where is the transparency? And I think it boils down to this, guys, and I'm going to highlight it here, is accountability and transparency. And we want to be held accountable and transparent. And... Um, I mean, I strongly believe that the corner man should be allowed to retrieve scores in between rounds to notify his fighter. Not the audience, but his fighter. I I really do. I think that the corner man should be allowed to retrieve the scores. Um, One of the corner men's. um, And notify his fighter how he's doing. Uh, This is that, this is, this, this is the one aspect of drama undermining boxing. uh, And it's available in all those sports. Um, If you disagree, well, uh, you sure you can't prove it either? So why not try it? You know, getting those scorecards. I mean, the, the other questions that were there, like the rules in place. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I don't agree with all of them, but this is one of the persons that I saw that commented, and these were the questions that were sent to us, right? Um, first and foremost, uh, we got to remember, folks, that the rules are in place to be adhered to, adhered to, right? Unlike other organizations, um, U.S. Boxing has a convoluted checks and balances that often start with a broken rule and ends up with one person saying, that's how it is. That's how it's always been. Here it goes again. Business as usual. Um, does it happen in other sports? Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. I, I don't know, you know. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, what, what do you guys think? You know, um, the classiest boxing team don't complain about poorly scored decisions. Um, and as we remain poker face when we believe the scores have mis- have been misjudged, uh, but what are the what are the repercussions of injustice? Where again, where is the accountability for the negligence? And then, uh, uh, yeah, what, what what are the repercussions? What's for negligence? You know, um, if that's the case, right? Because I think as we've all heard, we've all witnessed some pretty bad calls. Um, but and again, look at the end of the day, I see that. Uh, the, the judges are human as well. And again, these are the questions that I've brought right uh, to the forefront. Uh, we've all been part of bad decisions, falling upon promising boxers who become ruined by one side and of, of a blatantly wrong decision. When we go to nationals, um, uh, when our kids go up to make it to, a, to those levels, we see some horrible decisions, right? Uh, and of course, it's it's ruined by one side, and the fighter again gets discouraged. And, and I know as coaches, guys, we got to train our fighters. Uh, we got to teach them how to how to lose as well. But I think we all, and you're listening to this podcast as coaches, we've all been witnesses of bad calls um, and bad decisions, right? Uh, I do expect that USC Boxing to make some real efforts to change what's happening right now as a whole because, yeah, I mean, it comes down from Colorado. Fighters' parents will start to pull their kids from our programs and this doesn't happen. We need reform. We need to pack these 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 places. What is happening? Uh, so more talent will be forfeited to basketball and football. If, ki- if, if our parents start pulling our kids from the sport, they're going to go to other sports, right? Uh, as has been the case for decades in America. This can can all happen even if if any of us are wrong simply because there is no consistency uh, and highlight the word again consistency right we got to be consistent in our sport we got to be consistent as coaches as well we got to be consistent as as uh, officials we got to be consistent as gym owners everything has to work together it's not just putting the fault on one it's the whole wheel it's like putting a tournament putting a tournament together everybody's got to put their stuff everybody's got to put their grain everybody's got to put their two cents everybody guys in order for this these big tournaments i'm assuming these huge tournaments that you see in kansas or these these national titles that you see two rings in one place i'm pretty sure that everybody put something there everybody as coaches as kids as as gym owners everybody as the city council like we've been talking before you know when i put the clash of the titans guys i i i mean it's it's nine months in planning Right, so um, where's the accountability? And I think not just the judges to be accountable, guys, but our but our boxers as well and our coaches. You know, if we gotta have a we gotta have a bite to our bark, but we gotta be fair but firm across the board. Um, How about how about the need to have their uh, every judge's records tracked like like it's done in the pros? Second, judges need to have an objective standard as to what they are looking for. Uh, there must be a written law or rule book detailing what judges are looking for. And that was another question that was brought up. What are they looking for? Is there an agenda? Is there a written a, a written law? Right? Do we have records tracked by judges that we? And I'm just talking El Paso everywhere, right? Uh, there must be a written law, right? What's uh, what's out now is not enough. Boxing is much more complicated than a hip rotation or a turning of a fist. Um, and also, what they wrote here is that. Judges must not have an affiliation with boxing clubs, right? How about if we create a council of judges, right? Create a council for judging judges, police each other. It's just like in law enforcement, we police each other. There's, a, there's an entity in law enforcement that polices police. Um, and I'm assuming another, in, in, in every, in, not just law enforcement, everywhere, right? Uh, I think and if any coach wants to submit a formal protest, he must fill out a proper form, write the review, of a fight along with film footage. I don't know. Then an appropriate USA boxing official reviews the judges, review the judges, uh, review the decisions along with the footage. If the judge under review is deemed to have been incompetent or lacking integrity, appropriate measures should be taken, including the removal of the official of, of amateur boxing, just like the removal of a fighter if he make, doesn't make the weight. If a fighter doesn't make the weight or he comes in not part of the rules, hey, he's held accountable. He's even kicked out. Maybe I'm wrong. That's what they said. I'm just reading out the, what they they wrote to me, guys. Uh, but I hope I openly hope that the powers that be that be recognized, uh, they can do as much. But 
I think accountability in all aspects, and through the judges, the officials, the bike fighters, is much needed, guys. If we're going to turn this around, uh, we need stuff like that, right? And, and again, this is not an attack on, on, on our great judges here in the Sun City. Uh, it's not an attack on our officials because they do great work. Uh, but I'm talking, I'm talking across the board, New Mexico, um, up in the basin, uh, San Antonio, everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere in the United States that's listening to me. Uh, and again, these questions were brought up by um, uh, shootfairone.com where we got them. person called me and, and he wanted to share some other stuff. And I just want to here to, to, to get it out there for you folks. But eh, some I agree and some I don't. Um, and again, it's not an attack on nobody. Nobody should take it personal. At the end of the day, it's the advancement of the sport. And as we go right now, we have advanced uh, pretty good. Uh, so far so that was one of the questions on how we can change usa boxing and i'm pretty sure in future podcasts we'll be going to be talking about how we can how we can change boxing uh and any ideas welcome guys i think i think what and, and last but not least i think in tournaments guys i think we should have like a suggestion box have a suggestion box have a person standing out there um get a little box and pad and pencil pad and pin and give me your suggestions. Don't put your name. Just give me a suggestion. If you want to put your name and your number, put the suggestions so the LBC guys can can uh, review and, and and get answers. You know, there's there's got to be accountability evaluation. But I think a suggestion box would be great for the sport. I, I don't know. They're probably going to put me if they see me for you're the suggesting guy. <laughs> so, but I think it'll work. I think it. I think we need more ideas. Uh, no questions, a wrong question, right? Um, so that that's how we can change USA Boxing. Again, it's not an attack on nobody. Everybody does great work here in El Paso uh, that I see. All my officials do great work. The head of official, awesome as well. Um, and uh, overall, right, we, we got to put our two cents worth. We're guilty of a lot of the stuff that hasn't been moving properly uh, because we don't put our two cents worth or we don't register if we register through the gyms, um, and that was one of the things I've had a problem with, guys, and I'm going to be vocal about it, and I'm going to be honest about it, is registering the gym. Because it's not the LBC, guys. It's USA Boxing in, in, up in Colorado. What's the per, what, what, what would be the reason to register a gym? Well, you can throw events. You can do shows. And like, like last week we heard, it's not the responsibility of the LBC to throw shows. They've only, they only are deemed one. The rest is up to us, gym owners. The rest is up to us. We don't want to register. The fees are high, you know. I know I've been a, uh, uh, I, I've been a, I've been uh, doing that. I mean, I don't register my jinkies. It's high. Once in a while, I'll register because I don't throw shows. I only throw the Clash of the Titans, but it's high. But again, what, what, if I register my gym, besides, what if I don't throw shows? What is the benefits for that? Those are answers that need to be uh, questions that need to be answered. But um, a lot of it comes down the pike from USA boxing so that's how we can change usa boxing coming down from where i researched the stuff again the ideas and views are not from the warriors edge gym promotion i just want to put the answers out there spice up things a little bit uh to make people think uh and bring boxing together so uh, obviously um uh that's what what needs to be done all right we're going to move to our second topic and comment guys if you have to and if you want to we can comment we're going to give our second we're going to give more tickets. How about that? We're going to give more tickets for this year's 77th anniversary Golden Gloves Tournament, which happens Friday the 22nd, Saturday the 23rd, and Sunday the 24th, right? Um, and if, if you're hearing me out right now for the Golden Gloves, before I give you some tickets, before I give away tickets, and I want to, th and, and before I give away any tickets, I want to thank Junior Vicencio for for donating these tickets and giving away tickets because we wanna we wanna pack Golden Gloves guys this year. That's gonna be the goal. Um, local boxers, if you're hearing or anybody that's hearing out there, my gym owners, tell your local boxers guys that the Golden Glove weigh-ins will be Monday, February the 18th. Monday, February the 18th. The weigh-ins will be from 4 to 8 p.m. 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. This Monday, guys, February the 18th at the El Paso County Coliseum. They're not pre-matching, ladies and gentlemen. If, and these are only for local fighters. My out-of-town people, you know where to call. You can call Frank Guerrero. Awesome individual as well. It does so much work. He's the treasurer of the LBC. A shout-out to everybody from Alpine, Texas. 
Uh, big shout out to them. They do so much work for the South BC as they travel well. And again, they always put 100%. Mr. Frank Guerrero, awesome work that you do. Keep on doing the great work and your support coming all the way from Alpine, Texas. So again, Monday, February the 18th will be the weigh-ins from 4 to 8 p.m. And these are against from all our local boxers. And I did a shout-out to the treasurer. Uh, I also want to give a shout-out to the head of officials, Andres Lamanasgiano. You want to talk about somebody professional? Dressed for the occasion all the time. Plays the part well. He's, he's helped us so many. I think he's been part of every Clash of the Titans. Ten Clash of the Titans, huge tournaments. He, and, and he's always involved. He's the head of officials. Andres Lamanasgiano, a big shout-out to him. He does outstanding work. Um, uh, a lot of behind the scene uh, happens. A lot of things happen behind the scenes that these people don't get recognized. But uh, great official, man. Uh, awesome individual. So let's give away some tickets, guys. And the number to call for this next quiz question is 915-216-3789. Be the third caller. If you can tell me which El Paso boxer, which El Paso heavyweight boxer fought Vitaly Klitschko? Which El Paso heavyweight boxer fought Vitaly Klitschko. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. If you give me the answer, you get a pair of tickets for the Golden Gloves. I understood we just gave away the other ones. Uh, congratulations to Richard Martinez for the year of the Golden Gloves established. Uh, Richard Martinez just uh, got those two pair of tickets. For what year was Golden Gloves established? And I'll give you the answers at the end of the show. But we got that one already. Congratulations, Richard Martinez. You got a pair of Golden Glove tickets ready to go a pair of tickets to go see Golden Gloves enjoy the show folks and like I said from now on from here on out for next week next podcast we, we're, we're going to be giving away tickets we're going to be giving away gym t-shirts so tune in folks as we get bigger on episode number 5 alright last topic of the night guys and it's going to be a pure quick one we're going to talk about the disciplines in boxing that is something as a disciplinary person I am at work this is something that I bring to my gym to discipline because kids lack discipline. Um, kids lack guidance, discipline, structure, you name it, uniformity. They lack everything, right? And I understand that boxing requires self-discipline. It's a self-motivating sport, right? It's, and it's, that is, it's a self-discipline that is not required by many other sports, right? I've always said boxing is special. And when parents come in and sign their kids, I tell them, Hey, man, this is something special that your kid, your kid is going to get into. Um, discipline's not just necessary to become strong and fast enough to win fights, but it is a part of the culture that surrounds the sport. You know, it's a culture. Discipline, self-discipline surrounds the sport of boxing. And that's why I've been so intrigued with it, and that's why I do what I do for this sport, because I love self-discipline. It teaches the kid's character. It teaches people to grow. Uh, it teaches kids to, to know how to lose and value the things. Uh, they value the things up in the ring. They value life. Uh, because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it's the fighter that's going to be by himself up in that squared arena. So culture surrounds the sport. And boxers are taught discipline, not just in relation to the sport, but again, in all aspects of life. As a gym owner, guys, in, in law enforcement... Uh, time and time, more more than once, I see kids come into my gym uh, that lack the discipline. For whatever reason, man, I mean, for whatever reason, broken homes, gang problems, drug, uh, drug addiction, um, dropouts, and they come from an avenue, and it's my job, and, and gym owners, it's our job to help these kids, help these kids put, get them back. It's, it's, it's putting in the work as a coach, putting in the work as a mentor, that will help these kids one day be successful, not only in boxing, uh, but be successful in careers and be a better productive citizen um, out in the out in the out in the world, out in the business world. You know, I've had I've had some several kids come to my gym, and they're successful people. They've got one. Uh, we had a, a young lady uh, just graduated in nursing school. Uh, she got her degree in, and 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 uh, it was we're very proud to have had her here at the gym, and now she's being successful. Right, so it's not just it's not just the discipline about being fast, guys. It's it's the discipline about aspects of their lives, about about creating a better, productive citizen. Because 
at the end, it's going to be that person that's going to succeed and him or herself alone. Uh, personal benefits of youth boxing, and, it, and again, it teaches self-development and discipline in a safe space. You know, when you bring your kids to boxing, it's a safe space. And I tell parents all the time, your kids, it's a non-contact gym. Until he's ready to fight, we get him on there. Uh, this benefit of boxing is actually more like an umbrella, providing a multiple multitude of specific benefits. Uh, and of course, at the end, it's healthy. Of course, it combats some obes- obesity. But the specific benefits is discipline, character, motivation, uh, you name it. You know, uh, Five big principles that I made up. Uh, one of the benefits is that is more often overlooked, especially regarding the younger generation, uh, is that for a large numbers of youngsters, it is especially beneficial. It has been an increasingly frequent observation, guys, uh, that boxing gets kids off the streets. Boxing gets kids off the streets and actually gives them something healthy, safe, and productive to do. Whether you agree with me or not, it is a safe sport and it is healthy and it gives them something positive and it does so while allowing youngsters to decompress and channel their energy through aggression and uh, restlessness Uh, time and time I see kids come into the gym and they have so much aggression uh, so much aggression towards towards uh, towards authority figures so much aggression through the schools their teachers their parents Uh, and when they come to the gym we we give them that opportunity to channel their energy. And f- all the coaches that are out there, you do a magnificent job of helping so many kids out there that need guidance. And, and, and yeah, whether you like it or not, coaches, you guys are a mentor. Boxing makes bad neighborhoods less bad. You guys, can you guys agree with that? Boxing makes bad neighborhoods less bad. It is a healthier outlet for hormones of youth and joining street gangs using drugs or alcohol right or other questionable practices of young urban life so yeah it's it, we're gonna make our bad neighborhoods bad neighborhoods less bad uh not more than not, not more than ever guys young generations of kids need guidance discipline and stepping stones to assist them in making good choices and follow the right path at the end of the day it's them that will make the choice right we just help them but at the end of the day they're gonna make those choices and we just pray that they make the right choices we as coaches trainers gym owners um LBC officials, whatever you want to, everybody, everybody in this gamma of the of the sport of boxing is responsible uh, to them. It's a duty to serve them and help them. When they come and walking through my doors, it's a duty to serve them and help them. Um, and here are my five factors that are needed to help youth be successful. Uh, and these are the ones that I came up with. Uh, but it is our duty. And, and, and every day, guys, I, I really think to myself, it is my duty. If I have the power to help somebody, I'm going to help them. And, and, and yeah, look, man, I mean, if I didn't have to charge people, I, I, I wouldn't charge people, guys, but I don't have a money tree in back of my house. Money doesn't grow off the ground. You know, I have to pay the bills, but I don't do outrageous stuff. I really help a lot of people. And I'm not the only one. A lot of people help a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this sport, guys, that do so much for this sport, for the advancement of the sport. I name a few. I, I, I named a few people. Uh, but let me name some gyms. The Wolf's Den. Mr. Mark Sandy over there does so much for the, the, the advancement of the sport. Mr. Raul Prieto from Chuco Boxing, so much for the advancement of the sport. Um, there's just so many people out there to thank, man. And as my future podcast continues, I, I, I will put them up to light, man. So let's go to my five factors. Uh, for the disciplines of boxing. Uh, number one, the coach. I think coach is one factor. Uh, know how to teach, right? Know what you're teaching. And and, and I always say, look, I've, I I know people in the training business, guys, that they have a plethora of information. They, they know, they're an encyclopedia of training. They've been to so many trainings, so many battles. They know so much, but they couldn't teach a kid how to how to hit a ball off a tee. They're just not good teachers. A coach not necessarily needs to have been a great boxer at one time. Not at all. Everybody thinks that that's a, that, that's the that uh, that need that do that. Well, you're, he's a coach. Oh, he's never been a boxer. He can be a good coach. That's bull, right? There has been great coaches that have never been boxers in the pro ranks. You see them all the time. Great coaches, guys. All right. And like I said, you can have an encyclopedia of knowledge, but if you do not know how to deliver your information or your knowledge, then you're 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 no use to the young public. You're no use to the boxer, right? So know how to coach these kids. 
Know what your job is. Know how to coach is so important, guys, when you coach, right? Always create a need for the skill. Create, create a positive training experience, right? So when the kid comes out of here, he has a positive training experience and he's created a need for the skill. And also, never teach a kid to fail. More and more I see it in law enforcement, we call it never train to die because in the streets, if you train them to die, they're going to die. Just the same at the gym, in the arena of the safe sport that we call boxing. Don't, kid, don't teach a kid to, to, to fail. Teach them to win. And the outcome is winning. They might have messed up. They might have not done work. But if you, de- if, if you deminimize them and they, leave the, they walk out the gym door, deminimized, crushed, um, devastated, guess what they're going to do in the ring? They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna lose. Always, always make them walk out of that gym a winner. Always, always. Yes, break them down, build them up, but always walk out of that gym a winner. Never teach them to lose. Number two, let's show some genuine interest. Show that you care, right? That you want to see this, the kid succeed, right? Have that type of atmosphere. There will be times that you will need to be hard on them. Like I said, you're going you're gonna to do that breakdown concept. But then build, build them up. Once you break them down, guys, and they feel devastated before they walk out the doors, you build up their self-esteem by building up their confidence again. And that, my friend, builds up self-esteem. Number three, the structure. The structure is probably the very hard one. Is the hardest one for me, guys. Uh, most of the new generations have huge ish- have a huge issues with this, right? The structure, the rules, and the authority. Huge, guys. I've seen kids come to my gym, and um, just because of my career path or or my choices in my career, they have a, they have a problem. They have a problem with structure. And I'm not saying, guys, that we don't have our bad apples. Yeah, we do. Every every walk of life, it's just a job. But you know what? Not not just because. Uh, we have a uniform. It's the authority. I remember growing up, we used to respect authority. Now we've gotten away from that, you know, and, and we've gotten away from respecting our authorities, you know, even coaches are authorities, right? So that's the hardest one. That's the biggest issue that, that I've, that's my biggest obstacle that I've come across is the structure that kids don't have it at home and you think they're going to have it here at the gym? No way. It's going to be hard. Give them the small pieces first. Give them the advice. Once you give them advice, they progress, Right? They start to see the foundation. You give them a piece, they start building that home. They start building that foundation, the foundation of the pyramid. Show them how to start, and they'll see it. You soft wire them, then you hard wire them, right? This is also accomplished by the uniformity and team concept, right? Uniforms. Make them part of a team. A lot of these kids that come from the streets don't have don't have a structured family. They don't come from a... They don't know what a team. And believe it or not, I'm talking, guys, from experience because... I have kids, day in and day out, numerous kids that come from broken families or they just, they, they want to belong somewhere. And the only persons that are out there that make them feel wanted and belong is gangs. And it's those kids that are in the corners and they're up to no good. When they come here, we do that. And one of the big things that I've always had is, let's be uniformed, right? If you look at every company, team, agency, just about everywhere, people and kids wear uniform, even at school. Because they, they want to be part of something. Everybody's different, guys, but they want to be part of something. A uniform gives a person a sense of ownership, especially in youth that need guidance. A uniform, man, everybody's wearing red, everybody's wearing blue, everybody's wearing black. Yeah, they're representing their gym. And, what, and by representing the gyms, it brings them pride. You just can't go to Walgreens, guys, or the local pharmacy, I'm sorry, and get, give me the, the Pride 2000 Generation X pill, and I'm going to get Pride tonight. No, it's earned. And by getting those uniformities and getting that team concept, that's how kids get established that pride, that team concept. And kids have came up to me and told me, man, thank you for me, letting me be part of something. I've never been part of something positive. And that's, it builds character and confidence. It also builds the concept of a team. Hell, look at the USA boxing team. They all wear the same uniform. Number four, hold them accountable. Accountability. I've been talking about it all night. Hold your boxer accountable. If they fail to train or did not train when told to do so, don't fight him. Simple as that. You got to hold them accountable, guys. If a kid is a nuisance, rude, low poor grades at school, or bad with his parents, continues his bad traits. If the kid sees that there is consequences for his behavior then he'll probably make his own adjustments and making his own adjustments guys 
helps him build that character, that accountability. He, you're going to see that kid build and build his own. Hey, look, I'm going to make these adjustments. And seeing the kid make adjustments, just like seeing the kid make adjustments up in the ring while they're fighting, is one of the most precious things a coach can see. Last but not least, you set the rules. One of the huge problems is the parents. We are sometimes our worst enemies for our kids. You as a coach or a parent have to set the boundaries and be clear and consistent with, the, with everything. If the parent and coach are not on the same sheet of music, then it'll be an uphill battle, and that hill just got steeper. And Mia's experience, that's been tough. B battling with the parents as well, you know, battling with some parents as well. You know, I mean, man, as a gym owner, you see everything. And battling with the parents has been one of the big things. So those have been my dis disciplines of boxing, my five factors in boxing uh, that that I've talked about. And it's been uh, it, it's it's been rewarding, guys. But I think if we follow those five factors, uh, we build better champions. Folks, um, that's been my show. Um, nobody's called yet for which El Paso boxer fought Vitaly Klitschko. Uh, we're still giving away two tickets. You can still call even after long the show's over. 915-216-3789. Or you can even walk in the gym. 3465 Lee Boulevard Suite 233. Uh, walk in the gym and get yourself a pair of tickets. We're going to be giving away all week next week. Two golden gloves. Um, and uh, again, an another, don't forget that we got golden gloves coming up. February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the El Paso County Coliseum, but very important, Golden Gloves local boxers. You need to report Monday, February the 18th. The wins will be to, from 4 to 8 p.m. at the El Paso County Coliseum. This Monday, again, local boxers, February the 18th. You need to report to the Coliseum. If you're interested in fighting in Golden Gloves, you need to report. And another thing, coaches, make sure your passbooks are all updated. Make sure you have you took your safe sport classes. Everything, guys. Everything's got to be running smooth. Fighters, make sure you register. You have your physicals done. Um, and let's have a great Golden Gloves. Next week is the Golden Glove edition. Next week, I have some great people on board for episode number five. Uh, we will have uh, Ambery Health Southwest will be here with us to talk about their products, the CBD oil, and how it works on athletes. And CBD oil is safe and legal in Texas. Uh, we're also going to have um, Mr. Herman Delgado on board next week as our guest. We're going to put him on the barber's chair, the hot seat. We're going to ask him questions. If you would like questions to be asked to him, uh, email me at uh, www.warriorsedge51 at gmail.com or visit our website, warriorsedgeboxing.com. So next week we'll have our, our uh, heavyweight, our past heavyweight fighter, Mr. Herman Delgado, as he enlightened us with his past history, what he's done, what he's doing now, who he's trained, etc., etc. But he'll be in the hot seat next week here at Web Boxing 101. And then also we'll have Ambry Health Southwest, the good people at Ambry Health Southwest, talking about CBD oil and how it works some wonders. So, guys, we've talked about the Golden Gloves. We've talked about the disciplines of boxing. And we talked about an article that we found on shootfair1.com talking about the schedule bouts, the judges, the officials, bringing it up to light. Again, like I said, it has nothing to do with the reflections or beliefs of Warriors Edge Boxing. I just bring it up to light. People email me and I put it out. doesn't necessarily mean it's all factual. Uh, it doesn't, me doesn't mean that we're attacking anybody. Uh, but that's what it's all about. And that's why this podcast was created. Yeah, we're going to rattle some stuff. But that's what it was all about. And again, I want to give a big shout out to all my people uh, in West Texas Knockout Boxing Club in Odessa, Texas. Thanks for listening. Mr. Agustin Tapia, you're doing a hell of a job out there. Let us know when you have a tournament. Uh, and also, thanks for listening. Alpine Boxing Club in Alpine, Texas. Thanks for listening to us um, uh, every Thursday. Uh, Mr. Pueblo Boxing, thanks for listening to us as well. Julian in Pueblo Boxing, visit his website. It's awesome. A big shout out to them as well. Um, so the the answer to the heavyweight question was, and it was one, and I got a winner here for those tickets, and it was um, not David Rodriguez. It was 
The El Paso boxer that fought Vitaly Klitschko was Herman Delgado. <laughs> it was Herman Delgado, and the year that was Golden Globe was established was 1942. So uh, Richard Martinez won those those the 1942 t- the Golden Globe tickets for the what year was Golden established? Nobody has gotten the nobody got the El Paso boxer that fought Vitaly Klitschko, but that was Herman Delgado. And guess what? He's going to be our guest of honor in the hot seat next week. Uh, folks, is we're going to start wrapping it up already. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. Good people from the LBC, thank you for listening. Hector, thanks for listening to us. Uh, Junior Vicencio, thanks for listening to us. Frank Guerrero, all the way from Alpine again. I just can't say enough for you guys, all the stuff you guys do. Mr. Herman Delgado, thanks for listening to us as well. Uh, and everybody around the surrounding. Again, uh, this has been my podcast, episode number four. We can't wait to hear from you in episode five as this place gets bigger. My gym uh, is, is also getting bigger. Um, I want to hear from you. Email me. Tell me what you want me to put, what you want me to broadcast out for next week. Like I, I broadcasted some stuff today. Let me know, guys, what you want. I want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day and good training. And like I say, I always be say before, whatever you do in life, uh, put God first. This has been another edition of Web Boxing 101 Podcast. Until next time, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.